Scientists say that the effect of global warming on Antarctica is worse than they'd previously thought. They say its temperature has risen by half a degree Celsius in the last 50 years across the continent and not just on the edges, as earlier research had indicated. Christine McGurty reports from Antarctica. A pristine wilderness of unparalleled beauty. But behind it, this serene exterior, Antarctica is changing. This region, the peninsula, is warming fast. Now new data shows the problem is far more widespread. For the first time, scientists say the continent as a whole is warming up. The new findings published in Nature magazine come from almost 50 years of data gathered since 1957. This color-coded map reveals the results. In the east, there's been some cooling, but scientists say that's outweighed by significant warming in the western regions, seen here in red. 90% of the Earth's freshwater ice is contained within Antarctica, and if all that were to melt, I think the sea level rise would be something horrendous, like 65 to 70 metres. But we don't think that will occur any time uh, in the next few centuries. This part of Antarctica is warming up five times faster than the rest of the world. What no one knows is whether this is unique or whether it's happened in the past, long before humans were around. Eight years ago, I joined scientists investigating the history of the continent and recording the changes taking place now. More grasses and plants were growing on exposed rock, a trend that's been accelerating. And this week, evidence of change on a dramatic scale. This ice shelf is on the verge of breaking up. 25 miles long, this thick floating platform of ice would be one of the biggest to break off this part of the continent. Experts are installing a satellite transmitter to monitor its movements. The ice shelf is still here and I, I'm actually surprised that it's lasted as long into this summer as it has. It really could go at any minute and uh, uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if the final, the final crack started to appear very soon. It's not proven that our greenhouse gas emissions are responsible, but many scientists believe the evidence suggests that they are. Christine McGurty, BBC News. Good for you. Was it vandals from another planet? The mystery of who broke a wind turbine. First, zookeepers have had their work cut out in the past few weeks. By law, all zoos have to keep records of every birth, death, arrival and departure, big or small. Well, last time they counted, London Zoo had 15,104 animals, but now they've had to count every single one again. When it comes to counting the animals here at London Zoo, you just know this lot are not going to make it easy. Staying still, never a strong point for monkeys. But at least the sloth is a little slower, which gave us the chance to count two, saving a job for the handlers here who have to do this stock take across the entire zoo every single year. Outside, it's a little easier. The penguins both slower and a little more orderly, except, of course, when they spot something they want. But the handlers know them all by name, and they've already started tallying this lot up. Knowing exact numbers for them can make a world of difference. They can tell us whether or not we're breeding too many or not enough. Um, but it's generally just to um, make sure that um, we have everything that we're supposed to have. <laughs> there are 16 different types of penguin in the world, but only two of them actually live on ice. Most of these chaps are more accustomed to the conditions of the beaches in South Africa or the Falklands. And right now here, it's breeding season, which means the numbers are going up and up. There are three new additions in this hut, but they were a little too camera shy for us. More though, to add to the total animal headcount, expected to be around 15,000 across more than 600 species. The reptile house has new arrivals too, the beaded lizard. These eggs have started to hatch. In a few weeks, they'll be like this. Here's a challenge. Could you count how many frigate beetles are clumped together here? Well, the handlers will have to take them out one by one. And be it birds, bugs or beaded lizards, correlating all of those numbers and species, well, it's going to be one huge and one long challenge. Now, some local people in a small town in the east of England are speculating that it's possible, just possible, that aliens from outer space have been circling the area. Well, how else to explain the mysterious damage to a wind turbine more than 60 metres off the ground? David Silito investigates.
It is a 65 meter high wind turbine and it's lost one of its huge blades. Another has been bent. So what did it? Ice, mechanical failure or something else? I saw two lights up here from over there and they were coming towards me. They couldn't be hot air balloons because they were changing direction and then joining together and one behind the other. It came right across. Bob and Valerie Harrop have been seeing mysterious lights in the night sky over a number of days. And then they heard about the missing blade at the nearby wind farm. I've seen four in the last, oh, well, just three weeks, two to three weeks. I've seen four, and that was three there, and then this other one that could have been the one that damaged the veins on the uh, turbine, I don't know, but it seems as if it was the same night that the damage was done. Investigators, though, are more inclined to think that this was a mechanical fault. However, the UFO spotters are not entirely convinced. David Silito, BBC News. Don't ask me. They're cute. But the teeth of this Hispanolian Selenodon can inject venom into its prey, making it one of the most evolutionary distinctive creatures on Earth. Zoologists spent a month trying to trap and record one. Nine days into the new year, and already several new species have been caught on camera, which proves 150 years on from Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species, nature still has plenty to reveal to scientists around the world. In India, scientists welcomed an unexpected visitor, this purple frog. The chubby amphibian was only discovered in 2003. He spends most of his life buried underground. Zoologists hope that his first appearance will not be the last. This quirky looking ocean dweller may have been known to biologists for 120 years, but only now have they discovered that the spookfish has mirrors for eyes. And this pink iguana has just been revealed as a different species to its Galapagos Island cousins, even though it was around in Darwin's time. Playing candid camera with new creatures is something scientists are constantly trying to do. And when it pays off, we find that nature is stranger than we ever imagined. Like this coelacanth, the fish was thought to have died out millions of years ago, until one turned up in a fisherman's net in South Africa. These species and many others have been so hard to find because they're on the edge of extinction. Tracking and recording such creatures might just give us enough knowledge about how they live to help them do so for a little longer. James Morgan, BBC News. This week, London Zoo started its annual headcount of every live animal and insect in its collections. The zoo, one of London's most popular attractions, is required by law to complete the tally of all creatures from the smallest spider to the largest ape. Nick Hyam reports. Penguins are natural performers, just as well when you've this many cameras pointing at you. London Zoo's annual stock take is a reminder that it's an unusual combination of a scientific institution and a visitor attraction, always on the lookout for publicity. All zoos are required by law to conduct an annual audit. Counting otters isn't hard, but fish and insects are another matter. Some of the insects and some of the fish we actually have to remove one by one from the tank so we get very accurate counting. London Zoo's count will help update the nationwide database of zoo animals, which is used for breeding. When the zoo's only male meerkat died, they consulted the database and imported two males from a zoo in Hampshire. Last night, that apparently paid off. Keepers heard lots of squeaking and believe one of their females gave birth. This little chap's an African black-footed penguin, and the zoo's got 40 of those, and it's also got three rockhopper penguins. Then there are 10 otters, five meerkats, maybe more after last night. There are 24 flamingos, and on and on. They haven't finished this year's count yet, but last year they had 15,104 animals or animal colonies, 650 different species. Nick Hyam, BBC News, at London Zoo. And that's all from this week. Join us again at the same time next week. Meanwhile, for me, David Jessel, goodbye for now.
out more, go to bbcworldnews.com slash click.